Hello and welcome. This is Andrea and you're watching the Mainstream Reiki YouTube channel where I am dedicated to help you with your Reiki practice, whether you're just practicing with family and friends, which that is excellent, or if you would like to be in a professional Reiki business. I do offer mentoring services for both scenarios. So if you're interested in that, head over to my website, MainstreamReiki.com and find out more about those sessions. In this video, I want to talk to you about rejection. Rejection can start even before you take a Reiki class and it can go all the way through your professional Reiki practice. So let's start at the beginning. As many of you know, I was certainly not confident when I first learned Reiki. I was very skeptical and I just wasn't even sure Reiki was real. And I had two powerful influences in my life that really didn't agree on how to take Reiki either. On the one hand, my father thought Reiki was voodoo and he would call it voodoo anytime the subject came up. Of course, he said that in a half-joking manner, but I got the hint that he really wasn't fully on board. But luckily for me, my husband was way ahead of me. It was because of my husband's support and interest in what interested me that I stuck with Reiki, and I'm here today making these videos. But I have heard over the years, ever really since I started teaching, from students who would come to class and they would admit that their spouse, their partner, maybe their children even, were not really on board with them taking the Reiki classes. Some of the resistance stemmed from questions about its compatibility with religious beliefs. Rest assured, Reiki never competes with religion. Reiki and Christianity, for example, can go hand in hand. And I know many practitioners who go to church on Sunday and they practice Reiki. There is no dogma in Reiki and we all practice for the highest good, for just helping. And we open up to receive Reiki energy for the highest benefit of whoever it is we offer it to. There's just no need for it to interfere in religion or really anything that we might pursue or believe in. The good news is that as time has progressed in the students that I have seen through the years, I've seen a decrease in the number of students that say they have unsupportive family members or friends. This is a great sign, at least in my book, that acceptance of Reiki and openness maybe to learn about things we might have questions about is growing. But what do you do if you find that you have naysayers around you or doubters or skeptics or people that really just don't want you to pursue Reiki for whatever reason? My advice is follow your guidance. Follow the guidance that led you to your Reiki path. And if it rings true to you, if it really sings to your heart to practice Reiki, I would invite you to stick with it. And one of the great ways to do that is find like-minded people. Find Reiki share groups, which now it's so much easier to do that with the online community. And there are other ways to connect with YouTube channels just like this one and all the literature out there now. You know, there's Reiki News Magazine that comes out, I think it's every quarter, so you can get fresh input, hear fresh Reiki stories that way, and read informative articles that kind of get your gears turning in your head, maybe learn some new techniques. There's Reiki books out there, Reiki talks online, Reiki classes, webinars. You know, there's so much out there that you can access that'll help you feel as though you're not alone in your pursuit of practicing Reiki. Through the years, it's really just gotten easier and easier to connect with other Reiki people. And that is really something to celebrate. And remember, there's really no room for competition in the Reiki world. We're all just trying to help people and pretty much everybody in the world could use a little help. So there's just no issue, at least in my book, keeping us from getting together, sharing ideas and creating a broader and more inclusive Reiki community. What happens when you run into rejection? Well, there's all kinds of rejection. Let's start with the client who's not sure Reiki's for them. They're skeptical and they're a little unsure about what is gonna happen if they would come for a Reiki session. This is where your confidence in Reiki, your love of Reiki, and how you explain it can go a really long way. So make sure that you have a simple and clear definition of Reiki, something like, well, Reiki is a Japanese technique for stress reduction and relaxation that supports the body's natural healing capabilities. 
It works on all levels, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, and it can do no harm. We could go on and on and we could tell them more about Reiki, but you want to really kind of keep it simple. Uh, one other thing you might add might be something about how anybody can benefit from Reiki. You don't even really have to believe in it. Just be open to something better. And, and that's really it. I mean, I think most people are capable of that. One thing I would advise you is don't ever try to convince people about Reiki. Just be neutral. Show your own love and respect for Reiki, your own enthusiasm, but don't try to convince them or fight with them or anything like that. Just put out the information and let it be because it might not be the best time for them to try it. Sometimes people need to sit with things for some time and when the time if the time ever arrives when it is appropriate or best for them to pursue Reiki, then we'll just let that all work out for itself. Simply remember, you don't have anything to prove to anyone about Reiki. And if we're talking about family and friends, it can be easy to get in stressful type discussions with them about Reiki if you're trying to pursue Reiki and they're doubting Reiki. Just remember, keep your eye on your Reiki path and just follow that. There's no need to ruffle any feathers along the way. There's no need that those people have to accept Reiki from you. Allow them to have their own decisions, their own independence, where your Reiki practice is concerned. I'm going to share with you a story from my own Reiki practice as a professional that didn't go so well, or at least I didn't think it went so well. And a few years back when I was practicing out of Celine, I had started in a chiropractor's office and there are videos on this channel that talk all about that. But what I want to say is that experience at the chiropractor's office was wonderful. It was a fantastic opportunity for me and it went very well. What happened was I reached a point where I had clients that were requesting appointments when that office wasn't available for me to use. So I was sort of outgrowing the, the time limits that I had to use the office. Also, that office was on the south side of a larger city in my area. And what I decided to do was put together a packet about Reiki, a packet about mainstream Reiki and myself, and I went to a, another chiropractor's office in that larger city. And I chose him because he was in an area with other holistic offices. So I thought this would be a great fit. And my proposal was to do just what I was doing down in my first office. And that was to, on a contract basis, offer Reiki to clients in his office, in a space that perhaps he wasn't using different times through the week. There would be no risk to him and it would only be a new profit center for him because he would make money with every client that I saw. I thought it was a great deal. I wrote a beautiful letter to him. I had all the package uh, put together so well and I delivered it. I was so proud of myself and, you know, everything always works out for me or so I thought. And it did, but it was a little rough along the way. And what I mean by that is you know what? He never followed up with me. He never called me back. And I was really kind of shocked. I was very disappointed. I just felt as though I was guided to do all of that stuff, you know? So it just didn't seem to match. But something interesting happened. Because I had put all that effort into that and all the, uh, I'm going to say, envisioning it happening and unfolding, because I had invested myself like that, and gotten excited about the prospect, when it fell through, when it didn't go as I had hoped and planned, I guess, what happened was interesting because that energy, that disappointment energy, I found it changing. And it made me almost, instead of being down about him not calling me back, it made me say, hmm, maybe that was just not the right thing. I thought it was really good. What other options do I have? And then came the idea of, hmm, maybe I could just get my own office and be independent and not have to worry about what times are available at what locations. And then I felt about that. And guess what? One thing led to another and I found an amazing office. I could afford the lease. I was ready 
for a lease commitment at that period of time. Uh, I had the clientele, I had new business also coming in. And so I felt confident that, you know what? I had underestimated myself. When I went to that second chiropractor, I was kind of lowballing myself and I had more potential than I was giving myself credit for. So his rejection allowed me to open up to other possibilities and make a leap, a leap that was absolutely the best thing that could have ever happened to me, to mainstream Reiki and for my clients, because I got to really expand the number of clients that I could see. I had the office to myself, so I wasn't working around any other schedules. It was perfect. I really was grateful that he never called me back. So I had done a 180 and that seems to illustrate something that I say, you know, my students and people who know me know that this is one of my favorite things. And that is that we don't label things as good or bad because what we think is terrible today could be a gift, a total blessing the next day. We just don't know. It's all about perception and perspective. So don't get too down if things don't go the way you planned. Take a step back and reevaluate your options. That rejection might actually be an invitation to something that you wouldn't even allow yourself to believe was possible. And finally, let me tell you about my dad. Remember he used to call Reiki voodoo? Well, several years ago, he came out for a visit. You see, we live across the country from each other. I said, hey, you want to do a Reiki session while you're here? I think I'd gained some credibility with him over the years as he saw me gain respect and success in my professional Reiki practice. He said, yes, it was very easy. And we did the session. And I have to say, he went to another place and was quite amazed at the session. For the rest of his visit, he talked about different aspects of what he experienced and it was beautiful. Please remember that everybody will come around or they won't. And it's not a reflection about you and it's not a reflection about Reiki. We just need to be patient. We need to follow our own Reiki path and trust that those who are ready will be open to it when the time's right for them. Please know I'm on your side and want you to succeed like so many others in the Reiki community. I hope the video was helpful to you. If you've ever had doubts or people in your life who just aren't on the same Reiki bandwagon as you are. Until next time, I wish you all the success and blessings the universe has in store for you.